The murky city sinks in the snowy haze Snowflakes keep falling down we Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the show uh, with me, Chris Goodrum and, um, well, you know Barbie <laughs> She's hogging the limelight again Anyway, um, as you can see from today's uh, title page uh, it's an Anglo-Canadian episode of the show and appropriate t-shirt, obviously um, So... Why an Anglo-Canadian episode of the show? Well, partly I've wanted to do an episode of the show on Canadian whiskey for some time, but I just haven't received the samples. I just don't come across it very often. And um, I thought it might be a nice idea to sort of, you know, combine it with uh, some newish-ish releases from uh, St George's D Distillery in, uh, in Norfolk, uh, along with a couple of uh, bottlings from two brewers uh, in Yukon, and uh, the um, uh, Glenora Distillery in, I think it's in Nova Scotia. And uh, we'll, we'll have a talk about them in, in a minute, but um, the, to me, it's, there's a really good reason for uh, tasting these, uh, these whiskies together. And the, the, the link between, I think, all three distilleries is, is, is innovation. Um, none of them are obviously hamstrung by the diktats of the Scotch Whiskey Association, as is their want, shall we say, and their, you know, what, what they decree as being whiskey. Uh, all of these distilleries have the ability to try different things, and that is certainly what they have done uh, over the years. So, um, as you know, the, the English distillery, I've spoken about the English distillery on several occasions, done several episodes of the show, and you may remember from about, I think it must have been about three years ago now, when I actually visited the distillery and did a couple of episodes, or filmed a couple of episodes there. Um, when I was leaving uh, the, the distillery after sort of uh, doing the, the, the episode in the uh, tasting in the warehouse, um, David Fitt, the distiller, sort of came out and sort of, you know, was, was, said, you've got to try this, you've got to try this. Uh, it's, it's a multi-grain mash bill that I've been working on. And um, it was pretty young stuff, it has to be said. But, you know, it was really intriguing. And uh, you, you may well remember the conversation we had about attempting to do 100% rye mash and, and failing abysmally. And um, I think, I mean, I'd be surprised if... Uh, I mean, I don't know whether that's actually been released, but we're looking at two of the, the farmers' releases uh, and certainly um, David's experiments with, with different grain types certainly has, uh, has fueled those releases, so it'll be really interesting to look at them. And um, we'll be, the two Canadian distilleries we're looking at, the first uh, is um, the Two Brewers, which was uh, founded, I think, in uh, 1997 by two guys called Bob Baxter and Alan Hansen. I like the name, Two Brewers. Yeah, it does exactly what it says on the tin, so to speak, if you see what I mean. There's no no sort of like a convoluted backstory. It's two guys that sort of are into their beer and sitting around a campfire and you know, decided, hey, why don't, why don't we make beer, you know? And lo and behold, they set up a, uh, a brewery. And uh, um, in 19, uh, 2009, uh, purchased a, uh, a pot still a small pot still and decided to start making whiskey and, and now obviously releasing it and uh, we've got two of the releases uh, to taste today and again they're doing some innovative things you know different mash bills different cask types all that kind of stuff and uh, the idea is that each release is a batch it's going to be different from the uh, the preceding batch one way or, or t'other and uh, should be really really interesting they've won numerous uh, Canadian Whiskey Awards and um, yeah so that's basically uh, the, the two brewers um, or the Yukon Single Malt as it's called. Now um, Glenora Distillery that, that makes the Glen Breton uh, is a bit more should we say well founded and it was uh, founded in 1990 so it's been going for sort of some years now and uh, again like I said they seem to be sort of quite an innovative distillery and certainly uh, the whiskey we're not tasting today the uh, the Glen Breton ice uh, is I believe still the only whiskey in the world that's finished in ex uh, ice wine casks and obviously as you know Canada is uh, well known for its production of ice wine and it's 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 interesting whiskey really quite pleasant 
um, and we're going to look at their flagship bottling I suppose the uh, the, the 10 year old uh, today um, and uh, see how it sort of you know, fits in with uh, all the other ones um, and you may remember from ooh, was it 2000 I think it was 2010 uh, they did actually have a bit of a run-in with the Scotch Whiskey Association and they objected to the, the, the use of the term Glen and Breton um, because they thought it would be mistaken for a Scottish whisky. Mm. The fact that it proudly pronounces it as Canadian whisky on the label is neither here nor there. It's like consumers will be confused. How? Anyway, thankfully that all got resolved and got resolved obviously in their favour and I believe it is available in, in the UK now and uh, I think to commemorate that they released um, a, a special bottling called uh, Battle of the Glen, I believe, um, which uh, was very, very apt. But um, So that's uh, who we're going to be looking at today. I think uh, we may as well just um, introduce the lineup. Shall we put it out? Right, okay, so we're going to kick off uh, with uh, the two brewers uh, or the, the Yukon single malts. We're looking first, this is release number six. Um, the distillery kindly sent me six, seven, and eight, but unfortunately, uh, seven was the, well, the, the peated version that they do but didn't kind of survive the posting um, and so we're looking at six and eight so six is uh, unpeated uh, spirit um, bottled at uh, 43% as is the second bottling which is release number eight which was released uh, tail end of last year uh, in what they have is several different ranges they have kind of classic uh, wood finishes and innovative don't they Yes, um, and uh, so the innovative thing about this particular uh, release is the use of um, hops in the in the in, in the mash, and uh, it doesn't say which type of hops they are using. Um, so I couldn't honestly tell you about that, and. Uh, um, Maybe it will have some influence on, on the malt. I mean, one would expect it to do so, but obviously we'll, we'll find out in due course. Um, the third Canadian whisky, like we said, is the um, Glen Breton 10-year-old, which is their, for want of a better word, flagship malt. It's been uh, produced for, for, for a number of years now. And uh, you know, the, the other interesting thing about, obviously, these three Canadian whiskies is that they're, none of them are rye. And Canada is obviously pretty well known for its uh, use of rye but these are all indeed single malt whiskies so it should be interesting and then it's on to the three English uh, whiskies this is the brand new release this is the uh, small batch rum cask now they seem to have uh, this is bottled at 46 percent uh, it was distilled in April of 2013 bottled in February of this year and this is batch 01 2018 they seem to have dropped the whole chapters uh, business which um, is a little bit of a shame because I kind of like the, the, the whole concept of the chapters of the evolution and all that kind of stuff and and they've had a, a redesign of the bottle and the label and the St George has disappeared and it's I can I can see the point, and the the, the current label, uh, as you can obviously see from the um, uh, title picture, is very modern. It's very up to date, and I suppose the the old label with with the St George on was uh, maybe getting a little bit old fashioned, possibly. But you know, it was it kind of it was quintessentially English, I suppose. Um, but you know, these things happen. Marketing people get involved, etc., etc., as you well know. And then we're going to be looking at two of their innovative bottlings. The first one we're looking at is the Molten Rye. This is batch one from 2017, uh, bottled in January of uh, last year and bottled at 45%. And then we're going to be looking at Parched, which is, uh, again, batch one from 2017, bottled in September of uh, 2017. And um, unlike the Molten Rye, which is obvious by its by its name parched i'm not entirely sure exactly the uh composition of the mash bill but i know that one of the main uh grains is torrified oats apparently so um hmm, could be interesting i think so uh so there you go that's uh this week's uh, little lineup let's uh, kick off with a bit of uh, yukon single malt then shall we? Yes. 
snowflakes keep falling down weaving bill of peace and grace okay so let's see what uh, the, the uh, uh, release number six gives us then shall we it's full it's fleshy it's um slightly estery there's a there's a sort of Irishy kind of feel to it. It's got a sort of slight sort of apricot-y, banana-y kind of character. Um, there's some lovely clean, fresh um, honeyed notes. There's some oak notes as well. There's a smidge of spice. Um, it's got a nice depth to it. It's relatively young, but there's no sort of obvious faintiness. There's no off-the-still notes. It's certainly... It's certainly ready for uh, for release, and it obviously goes to show that sort of uh, I would guess they probably use a relatively long fermentation time and quite slow distillation to retain the obvious uh, estery fruit kind of character uh, that this has. And um, all right, it's it's maybe not the most complex of of whiskies in the world, but you know it delivers what it delivers really quite pleasantly. I think it's got a a nice depth it's got you know some soft honey character like i said and uh, yeah a, a kind of nod i suppose to uh, to ireland in its uh, uh certainly i think if i was tasting this blind i would uh, i would be uh, in that particular country but anyway let's uh, see what the power gives us Again, full, fleshy, actually very full flavoured in actual fact. Kicks off with the the honey, the apricot, the barley, um, and the wood kind of comes through on the finish. Again, it's got that kind of banana-y sort of Irishy feel to it. A little bit of wood spice on the finish. Actually, more than a little bit of wood spice. It's got a real nice tongue-tingling spicy finish. Um, Again, not exactly hugely complex, but certainly sort of ready for drinking. Certainly very pleasant, uh, very easy going, lots of flavour. I mean, at the end of the day, what's not to like about that? It's, you know, like I said, it has a, a very Irishy kind of feel to it. Um, and um, a little bit of tangerine kind of just coming through now. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I think it's got got some, some lovely body to it, really nice depth, and um, yeah, pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to release number eight. This is uh, the Innovation Bottling. Uh, let's see what the goes on this one, shall we? The hoppy notes are quite obvious, and they give it a little bit more of an edge. There's a slight sort of like uh, powdered coriander. Um, again, there's some kind of fleshy fruit beneath it. There's apricot. There's barley. That's that's really a really intriguing nose. It has to be said. Again, not particularly old. It's got a nice sort of youthful exuberance to it, but not too youthful. There's no faintiness. There's no off the still notes. Um, a touch of oak, maybe not quite so much oak as uh, the um, the release number six, and certainly I think the use of the hops has given it a little bit of an edge, which I think is quite nice. Um, and again, just kind of works really nicely, really well balanced. Very unpleasant, it has to be said. A little bit of spice. Let's see what the pump gives. Serially finished in actual fact. It's got a, a very, again, a really hoppy character, um, and that adds a sort of like a slight bitterness, um, which kind of balances up the sort of sweetness of the fruit. Again, that kind of Irishy, bananary kind of apricot character, bit of oak, um, bit of spice, and again, that is really, really intriguing. I love that finish. I mean, it's got that 
wonderful kind of sweet bitter balance um, which is just really well balanced and um, again a little bit of kind of coriander notes a little bit of, 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 of herbally sort of not quite nettly notes but sort of getting towards that kind of feel um, yeah I like that that is really impressive I, I, I really think that is an, an, an excellent whiskey so yeah good stuff Okay, so let's move on to the Glen Breton 10 year old. Let's see see what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Really cereally, oily, quite heavy spirit. Um, lots of oily barley, apricot. But just loads and loads and loads of cereal. It has a sort of almost kind of wheatiness to be honest with you um i'm sort of trying to sort of dissect the the the, the, the aromas and they like i said there's a there's a kind of almost oaty wheaty sort of kind of character happening here although as far as i'm aware it's all single malt or malt, malted barley i should say um really deep really intriguing very different it has to be said um it's certainly very unique and style that I must admit that I don't think I've come across very often. I've come across oily whiskies, obviously, but I don't think I've come across one that's quite so serially in character. The slight floral note kind of coming out now, a little bit of almost kind of hyacinthy sort of notes. Um, not a huge amount of oak in actual fact. The, the oak is... It's very subtle, there's a little bit of vanilla, but it's all kind of sitting in the background, it's adding some structure, it's not really adding a huge degree of character, so it's very it's very spirit orientated. Let's see what those give the palette gives us then. It feels quite young. It's got that almost kind of rose petal mari kind of character uh, on the finish. Again, really cereal. It's got that sort of oaty, wheaty, sort of barley kind of uh, thing happening. A little bit of honey. Quite drying on the finish. A little bit of spice as well. Um, hmm, re really unique. Really interesting. Um, and certainly it is like nothing else that uh, uh, I, I've ever tasted which is which is a good thing I mean because that's basically at the end of the day um, what you want I mean I, I remember some some years ago tasting um, the, the, the first release from um, I think it was Overeem in uh, South Africa uh, not South Africa in Australia I think and um, or was it South Africa I forget now yeah I think it's Australia and um, I, I was really looking forward to it I mean I tasted Sullivan's Cove and all that kind of stuff and uh, it was all just heavily sherried and it was all very kind of you know no no real sort of interest um, and the same with the the very first release from um, in the three ship series from the George Sedgwick in, in South Africa again I was hoping that there would be some kind of South African kind of character to it um, but it was all sherry and it was all a bit kind of like okay just tastes like any other sherry whiskey good quality nevertheless um, obviously subsequent releases seem to have a lot less sherry in them and had more kind of um, character should we say um so so yeah i mean this coming back to to uh, this particular whiskey loads and loads of character um really quite interesting and um yeah not too bad upon the window, time after time, okay, so let's move on to the first of the three english so this is the the brand spanking new rum finish uh or rum cask i think cask um yeah, rum cask. So I think this has spent its entire um, um, five years or so in rum cask. So let's see what the nose gives us. Fresh, crisp, um, the, the obvious dried rummy fruits coming through, but it's got that lovely sort of fresh barley character 
little bit of um, a little bit of vanilla touch of spice that is just wonderfully balanced it's not too sweet I mean you know rum cask finishes or rum cask matured whiskies can be a bit sweet but um, certainly I remember the uh, the, the, the tomatin uh, rum matured whiskey which was again like this one aged for its entire uh, many years it was in uh, the rum cask um, and di didn't seem overloaded the game was really well balanced just like this and um, there's a lovely sort of like I said fresh sweet kind of thing happening um, slight sort of edgy sort of oily note kind of coming through but all really really well balanced and then uh, you know I'm still very very impressed by what uh, what the English distillery are doing and uh, um, this is absolutely fantastic stuff really good Let's see what the power's like A little bit fuller, fleshier to kick off with on the palate, although it does become quite crisper and citric and slightly drying on the finish. Again, the balance is really very, very good. The rummy dried fruit seem to be sort of working in with the barley and the apricot and the fruit. Um, it's a lovely, full, balanced whiskey at the end of the day. And a little bit of spice just kind of coming through on the end, a little bit of wood spice. Um, Yep, it's young, it's got a youthfulness, but, you know, as we know from, you know, previous tastings of the English whiskey, it matures a lot quicker, obviously, because of the uh, um, the climate in Norfolk. And, um, yeah, I really like that. I think that's really, really impressive, and um, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be sort of somewhere in the region of about 50-odd quid a bottle, which is, yeah, I suppose a fair amount for um, a five-year-old whiskey, but it's pretty good, isn't it? Yes, come on then. No, oh, bloody hell. Ooh, can't stay out of the limelight, can you? So, yeah, I think that was uh, really quite an impressive one. So I want to come tonight. Come oh, okay. So, let's move on to the first of the two farmers' bottlings. This is the, uh, the malt and grain. Uh, malt and... Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the first of the two farmers' bottlings. This is the Molten Rye. Let's uh, see what the nose goes shall we? Quite malty. Uh, rye is, is, is kind of quite noticeable. It's a sort of slightly herbally, oily kind of nose. Um, Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the two farmers. This is the malt and rye. Let's see what the nose gives us. Well, the rye is quite noticeable to kick off with, although it's kind of slightly herbally rather than the sort of spicier sort of rye. Um, it's got some youth to it. It's got a, a sort of a little bit of a, an oiliness to it. Um, there's some pleasant fruit. There's a, a, quite a bit of maltiness. Cereal, really well balanced. Not a huge amount of oak. Again, it's kind of letting the, the 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 character of the spirit, the character of the sort of the malted barley and the rye kind of come through. And um, it has a lovely purity to it. Um, a little bit of almost kind of mineral notes. Almost, almost sort of saltyish sort of mineral notes. Yes. Um, touch of earth, maybe an intimation of coffee possibly, um, but it's a, it is the, the, the malted barley and the rye that's the, the obvious um, focal point of, uh, of this particular nose and, and um, really, really intriguing. Let's see what the palate gives us.
very chewy, very malty on the middle. The rye kind of comes in first with that nice herbal intensity. It's quite oily, um, cereally intense. Again, not a huge amount of oak. It's certainly not, you wouldn't mistake it for, a, for an American whiskey. It has to be said, it's certainly not got that sort of sweet corny character or, or, or sweet oak character. It's very crisp, it's very dry. Um, it's got a, a nice sweetness to, on the finish, it actually has to be said. Just sort of slight sort of fruit sweetness, um, that kind of a little bit of almost citric um, sweet fruit. Uh, along with some sort of sweeter rye notes as well. Um, that is really impressive, that is really complex, uh, especially considering it's not particularly old. Um, but it's the, it's the balance of the, of the grains that kind of gives it its complexity. And uh, yeah, I, I really like that. I think that's, that's really intri intriguing. Isn't it intriguing? Yes, it's very intriguing. Okay, so let's move on to the parts. Let's see whether they give us on this end, shall we? Quite heavy, quite oily. Um, the, the the oatiness is, is is certainly sort of noticeable. It's got quite a cereally character. There's a little bit of, of of citrus, a little bit of orange, tangerine, that kind of citrus. Um, a little bit of malt, possibly a little bit of rye as well. It's got that sort of slightly sort of herbally note that uh, certainly is uh, um, noticeable on the uh, the malt and rye. So uh, I'm guessing there might be a little bit of rye in that mash bill. But uh, yeah, it's again, it's got a, a, a nice softness to it, um, which is, seems to be the, uh, the, the 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 trademark of the uh, the English whiskey. Um, but it's got an edge to it as well, There's a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of cereally notes, like I said. And um, yeah, I think it's really intriguing. It's really different. And um, you know, I think if, you, if you're in the market for something a little bit sort of um, left field, shall we say, then certainly this is uh, worth looking at. Let's uh, see what the power gives us. Yeah, that's got a real oatiness to it. Slight sort of toasted note, bit more oak, bit more fruit sweetness. Um, really nicely balanced. Does dry a little bit on the finish. I'm, I, feels like there's a little bit of rye again, a little bit of herbal notes, a little bit of wood spice. Um, very full. It's got an edge to it. It's got a. It's not a sort of. Um, there is a softness to it, but it's not sort of an easygoing kind of. It's a sort of whiskey that requires a little bit of your attention, shall we say? Um, and it is just very unusual. Um, like I said, it has that sort of distinct oatiness to it. Um, I have picked that up in in some American whiskies uh, o over the years, um, but it certainly you wouldn't wouldn't mistake this for an American whiskey. It's certainly not got the sweetness of the corn, it's not got the sweetness of the the, the oak. Um, certainly I, I would I'd be surprised if this was finished in uh, or aged in first fill American oak. It certainly feels like the, the oak is very subtle, I would guess refilled. Um, very mouth-watering, fresh, crisp, and I guess this is exactly what David was was after. Not too much oak character, just enough oak to um give it some structure and some balance uh but allowing the sort of the character of the uh, the grains to kind of come through and pretty much i think he's achieved that i think this is a very 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 interesting whiskey and i certainly have no issue with uh, with recommending it or selling it and i think it's certainly worth trying if you're after something a little bit different so um hmm. nice Okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. So, firstly, uh, I would just like to say a, a big thank you to um, 
the two brewers uh, for sending me samples all the way from Canada. That is really, really appreciated. And I hope, hope you've enjoyed uh, my review of your whiskies and uh, also the same to the English uh, distillery, although um, the samples came through their um, agency or their, their distributor Amethyst Drinks. So again, a big thank you to them for the samples. And... Um, really interesting like I said um, I just wish there were more Canadian whiskies here in the UK I mean there are I mean the Corby distillery seems to have reappeared after a bit of a break um, and so you can get lot 40 which is a great rye whiskey and you can get the um, the Pike Creek as well uh, I don't know whether you can get the the, the Yukon whiskey in the UK I I think I've seen it on Master of Malt, but I can't remember exactly. But um, I think, yeah, I think that the 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 young classic sort of uh, unpeated whiskey is just really nice. Like I said, it's got a very distinctive kind of um, almost Irishy kind of character. It's easy going. I think if you like Irish whiskey, if you like that kind of estery bananary kind of fruit i think it would certainly be um up your street so to speak um the innovative release number eight i think is just again really unusual i think the use of the um the hops uh, has it's not too weird it's not kind of like corsair or maybe balcones um it's 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 very approachable it's not too weird and wacky a kind of whiskey where you sort of maybe taste it and think yeah that's kind of interesting but I couldn't drink an entire glass of that that I could quite happily sort of drink I think that's really really nice and um the Glen Breton um yeah very very distinctive and uh, you can't sort of argue with that it's certainly what you want from from a whiskey you want something distinctive you don't want run of the mill and certainly I think um that is certainly not the case with that one uh, the rum cask, uh, English whiskey, absolutely spot on, really very very good, really like that, should be stocking that one fairly soon as that's, like I said it's a new release and uh, like I've been a big fan of, of uh, what the English distillery has been doing or the St George's distillery has been doing so um, long may that continue. Um, the Molten Rye, well yep I, I think that's one of those kind of classic examples of it does what it says on the tin. You certainly get the malted barley, you certainly get the rye. It's the more herbally kind of rye. Uh, and the emphasis is certainly on those grains rather than on sort of like the, the oak. Yes, it is. Um, oh, come on then. Oh, she wants to put in one final appearance. Um, and um, the, the parched, again, like the molten rye. It's got the emphasis on the grains uh, rather than the oak and is really intriguing and a little bit different and at the end of the day that's what you want you don't want the same old same old I really like to see innovation I like to see sort of distilleries trying different things and I'm certain that sort of um, all these distilleries have probably tried some slightly more even left field stuff which probably hasn't been released it's probably sort of like sitting in cask going well mm. but what they have released has been is is really really intriguing so um so yeah that that's this week's episode of the show in the bag i hope you've uh, enjoyed it and um uh, I hope you tune in sort of next week and in continuing weeks and I'd just like to say again a big thank you to everybody that, that posts comments and uh, likes and all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch my reviews and um, yeah, so until next time from me and um, a puddy cat, uh, good dramming and good afternoon. <laughs>